For the past seven years, every digital project that I have worked on, whether it be for college work, content creating, music production, or photo and video editing, has been produced via my 2015 MacBook Pro. However, after all those years of working off a laptop, I felt it was time for a well-needed upgrade to a desktop system, more specifically, the Mac Mini. Welcome back to the channel, guys. If you're new here, my name is Anthony. So today's video is gonna be quite different from the photography vlogs that I have been doing lately. Instead, I thought it'd be cool to give you all a bit of a behind the scenes uh, work desk tour since I often get questions asking about what my workflow looks like and what computer gear I use to make the photo and videos you see on this channel. And I'm actually gonna change my setup since I've actually just acquired the brand new Mac Mini with the M2 Pro chip, which I've been hearing really great things about. So this won't be a total in-depth tech review, but I hope to give you some of my initial thoughts and hopefully some inspiration. So I'll just cut straight into it as I just mentioned for the past several years. Every digital project that I have worked on has been produced via this 2015 MacBook Pro which you see right here. I can still remember the first day getting this and just being so ecstatic. Before that I actually had an HP laptop which worked okay to an extent but you know Windows can be kind of a uh, complicated and annoying so it was initially the simplicity of the Mac that drove me towards it. Not only that, but this was the first computer I had where I was just impressed with the speed and power of it. On top of that, it's highly sleek, portable, and fit in my bag whenever I needed to take it along with me to a college class or anything of that sort. Right about now, you're probably asking me, well, Anthony, if it still works so great, why did you need to upgrade? And my answer to that basically comes down to one word, storage. This MacBook only came with 121 gigabytes of flash storage. At the time, I didn't really think about storage or RAM or any of that. It's come to the point where I have over 50 gigabytes of system data on this thing, and even more so of my own personal document and app data. So I would keep getting frustrated when I would be working on a project and then you would get that little pop-up tab saying your Mac is running low on storage. I work heavily on Lightroom, Premiere, and Photoshop, and they actually kept crashing due to my system basically having barely any flash storage left. Now I guess I could have gone the clean my Mac route and try to free up some of that space, but I prefer to risk not losing any important data until I've securely transferred everything over to the new system. Basically I'm just scared to mess anything up. And you guys know me, I like to push my equipment till basically it's on its last legs before I decide to do any costly upgrades. I mean I had an iPhone 7 till like only last year when I decided to upgrade to the 13 mini. And I actually made a vlog about that, so if you actually want to check that out, I'll link it here and you can watch it after this video. So yeah, essentially what this all came down to, plain and simple, is I needed to upgrade. So I've made the investment and let me show you what I've acquired so far from my new desktop Mac setup. So first things first, I'll start with the core of it all, the Mac Mini. This is the recently released Mac Mini with the M2 Pro chip. Now when I was initially doing the research on what system to get, at first I wanted to get everything right away with minimal gear as possible, so right away, I was actually considering one of those new M1 iMacs. One, because they looked attractive, and they come in a lot of vibrant colors, and basically it's all you gotta get because everything comes in the display right out of the box. However, I came across a lot of drawback with that system, especially with the processor it has. I guess you have to really upgrade the heck out of it if you plan to use it for any sort of uh, professional creating. And with all those upgrades coming close to around $2,000, I mean, that's already Mac Studio territory. So of course I was on a budget, but I didn't want to see beach balls all the time. So when I heard about the new Mac Mini starting at $600 with the M2 chip, I was pretty intrigued. Doing a deep dive of research, meaning spending hours on YouTube and watching other people's reviews, <laughs> turns out if I wanted to do any kind of creative work, which I do a lot of, meaning Lightroom, Premiere, Photoshop, Logic, etc., Upgrading to the M2 Pro is going to be best for me. Because of all those extra CPU and GPU cores, which will handle those tasks like photo and video editing with ease. So besides doing a lot of research on which new Mac to buy, I think I did three times this research on what monitor to get. This was a completely new area for me as I've never had to buy a computer monitor before as I've primarily worked only off of laptops. I knew I needed a 4K display that was color accurate to get the most out of my photo editing and color grading. Initially it seemed like a no brainer just to go with the Apple Studio display, but at 1600 it was just way out of my budget right now. I really wanted it to be somewhere around two to three hundred dollars for a monitor, so after hours of research I came down to the two best options for me. One, the LG 27UL500, 
and the other the HP U28 4K HDR display. The LG seemed like a bargain and had good reviews, but I think that display is marketed more towards gamers. But this HP U28 offers high resolution and is apparently designed for color accuracy and content creation. It also comes with more ports including USB-C, and at $350, it was more than the LG but still didn't break the bank. So ultimately the HP display is the one I decided to go with, and I'm excited to try it out and see how much of a difference a larger screen will make on my work production. Now the Mac Mini doesn't come with a magic keyboard or mouse, so those are accessories I also had to buy separately. However, I just couldn't justify spending the 200 on the Space Gray Magic Keyboard. Yeah, I know the white Magic Keyboard is less expensive, but let's be real for a sec, the silver and black keyboard just looks more aesthetically pleasing and matches the setup. So for half the cost of the Apple Magic Keyboard, I decided to go with the Logitech MX Keys from Mac. It was cheaper, has backlit keys, great reviews, and most importantly, it matches the setup. The last accessory I decided to get was none other than the Apple Magic Trackpad. Simply because after using my MacBook Pro for so many years, I'm just too used to the haptics and shortcuts of the trackpad. So rather than the mouse, I decided to go with this in black. Again, the white was cheaper for some reason, but you gotta match the aesthetics, right? Alright guys, with all that said, now all I gotta do is unbox everything and start setting it up. So let me go ahead and show you my desk setup the way I have it right now. Alright guys, so I'll just give a quick rundown of my current desk setup before I start to rearrange everything. So here is my desk, and in the center, powering it all, obviously, is the MacBook Pro. And what I got going into it is actually a USB hub, which runs along down here. And what I got going to this is, firstly, the Western Digital My Passport from Mac, which gives me uh, two terabytes of external storage to work off of, which is really essential. And next to that is actually the Arturia Mini Lab MK2, which is really useful for doing any sort of music production. Uh, going along next to that actually is the Focusrite Scarlett Solo interface, which gives me a mic and guitar input. So whenever I want to lay down a track or record anything, I can do that. And lastly, going behind that into the Focusrite is the PreSonus Eris 3.5 Studio Monitors which I can control with this knob right here. So that's about it. Pretty simple setup. I do have the Alexa right there, which is actually really useful as well. And yeah, let's start rearranging everything and getting the Mac mini and the new studio out here. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. All right, I gotta do the unboxing in front of you guys since I know it's so satisfying. So go ahead and try it. There you have it.
All right, so here it is, my new Mac Mini desktop setup. I gotta say straight away, this already feels like a more professional setup. The difference transitioning from a 13-inch laptop screen to a 28-inch display has been really night and day for me. So much so that the large display actually felt like a big adjustment for me. But I think I got over that after about a week or so. Now it's just crazy to me how I did all my editing from such a small laptop screen. Right away, I noticed the colors looking very sharp and crisp. So it's been about a month of me using this new setup because I wanted to take time to actually install the apps I use and make sure everything was running smoothly before I gave my initial review. And yeah, so far this Mac Mini, I mean, it's pretty darn fast. From the initial installation of apps like Photoshop and Premiere Pro to actually exporting video. Right now everything on the Mac Mini is running considerably faster than my MacBook Pro. Where on average a 12 minute video project my MacBook Pro took anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes to fully export, this Mac Mini has been doing those same files in just under 2 minutes. And right now I'm talking about 1080p Full HD projects, I haven't dabbled in 4K yet, simply because my MacBook could not handle those 4K files. However, it's nice to know that now I can edit in 4K because I know this Mac Mini has the capabilities to do so. What stuck out to me the most so far though, is how much more room the timeline I have to edit in Premiere Pro with this new 28 inch display. It's really been a game changer. And apart from video editing, I also think my photo editing tasks are going to improve considerably with this new system. Already Lightroom Classic has a smoother feel to it. Being able to edit my pictures with a larger screen has been allowing me to see more details in my images than I was able to with my MacBook. Also the 16 gigabytes of RAM this Mac Mini has has been allowing me to run apps simultaneously. For example, I can run Premiere Pro and edit in Lightroom at the same time, in case I need to add any last minute photos to my videos. Or more simply, I can use a browser when running Premiere, which is something I wasn't able to do anymore with my MacBook because of how clogged the memory was becoming. Music editing has been great as well. Right now I only have the default GarageBand DAW, but it's wild how much more tracks I can lay down and see clearly with this display. It feels like a professional studio. As far as the accessories that I got to go with this new system, I mean, you already hear me say this HP U28 display, I'm already really impressed with it. The colors are rich and vivid, and the setup is pretty much straight out of the box. This Logitech keyboard actually feels really nice as well. I've tested out Apple's Magic Keyboard many times, but I gotta say, I actually prefer the feel of this Logitech keys. It has these circular grooves in the keys, which actually just feel really nice on the fingertips. So yeah, Logitech MX keys, really sleek, very comfortable. And lastly, that leaves me the Apple Magic Touchpad, and not much you can say about it, but zero complaints at all. Works just like a laptop, and it allows me to use all those same touch functions I use on my MacBook. I really enjoy editing with the touchpad and feeling all the haptic response. Honestly, it just makes me work and edit a lot faster. Overall, guys, I've really been enjoying this new setup and the Mac Mini. Like I mentioned earlier, this video isn't a full-on tech review, just an upgrade I definitely needed for the computer work I do and what I found was best for me and my creative needs. But I definitely hope this inspires some of you. If you were looking into the Mac Mini with the M2 Pro chip as a workhorse system, or even just to simply use for everyday tasks like surfing the web or office work. I definitely needed the extra RAM and storage, and hopefully this new setup gets me at least through the next decade before I gotta do another upgrade. Meanwhile, I think I'll be enjoying all the video work, photography work, music creating, etc. that I will be doing on this new Mac Mini M2 Pro. As for my MacBook Pro, I'll definitely be keeping it as a backup. Once I safely transfer all of my data from here to the Mac Mini, I should be able to clear out some of the storage and have this thing running smoothly again. So that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the different subject matter and getting a behind the scenes look at my whole editing process. But be sure more photo content will be coming in the next video. As always, drop a like and subscribe for more content like this. And with that, I will catch you all in my next video.